frame for what we are calling an imaginary interior. So this is the interior. I mean, I immediately want to say room, but it doesn't have to be a room. It's an interior of something, Katie. So okay. why don't you sort of start us off with a label. A room, a room is an, or an interior. Imaginary, is well, it's somewhere inside, mm. but it could be a cave. It could be um, the basement of a high rise it could be you you but anyway start off with a piece of furniture um it's like a, a chair good well i'm going to draw around you it's like almost designing a stage set isn't it how's a chair look <laughs> any chair you like the chair you draw will be will be the chair God. Um... and i'm starting with a curtain rail It'll be a, a strange, wonky armchair then. Nice, nice, I like it. Oh, Immediately no. we're sort of furnishing a room of some sort. I'm going to have a sort of sweeping... Again, this is all a weird angle. No, quite, oh, I see, you're, you're sort of struggling with the... Not built for this kind of drawing. <laughs> no, but but what it does, it's creating this really well. It's creating a really nice feel. Oh, it's not. It is. I like it. I like it. This is this is a lovely little sort of awkward chair, and I'm going to do a little figure on your chair. Look, look at that. Is that ghost again? Yeah, it's a little ghost. Little ghost sitting in your ghost chair. I'm going to, yep, there's a little table. Yep. There's something quite French about um, maybe a little glass of something going on the table. I don't know why I'm whispering because I'm drawing yeah, a ghost. Why not? <laughs> I'm drawing a ghost, I'm whispering. It's very yeah, strange. So ghost. And I'm just going to do the skirting board here, forgive me. This is oh, a skirting forgiven. board. Okay, thank you. You've forgiven my skirting board. Only so that I can then sort of, you know, ground my curtains, if you see what I mean. So they're, they're sort of slightly tassely. Oh. So. It's a huge curtain, isn't they're, it? They're lovely, yeah, I say lovely. They're, they're lovely sort of brocade curtains, I think. I'm going to invite you at some point, so we're going to be drawing across each other, to decorate my curtains. Mm, okay. And here's the other side. I'm going to go right the way across with my, I feel like some sort of interior decorator here. There's the other, other curtains. Okay, right the way across there. Where's this inspiration taken taken from? Uh, and I don't know. All, all the curtains that I've imagined in, in sort of glossy catalogues or brochures for hotels, maybe. There we are. He looks rather forlorn, doesn't he, in this little... Yeah, well, he's course, had a stressful day at work. He's think... unwinding with a nice glass of red. And... Is that you, Dad? Yes, I, I, I think so. Are you sort of imagining I'm a ghost of some sort? That's slightly... Well... Yeah, well there's, there's, there's a window. Just unwinding with your bottle of red wine. Lovely. Well, there's the bottle of red wine. <laughs> <laughs> there wouldn't be a drop left in there. In fact, you're wrong. There is, look, there's one <laughs> drop and it's it's actually landed on the carpet, you see, already. Oh, well, that's, that's Our interior true. is that getting happens. all messy. Yeah, thank you. A <laughs> little bit too much. I think you're oversharing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing nicer than the end of a hard day in the studio, all working away, coming back and just <laughs> uncorking a bit of liquid inspiration. Nice, nice, nice uh, decoration. Yeah, I'm feeling like something it. fancy. Yeah, good. Now I feel I need to sort of now get, oh, now we've got to have. The piece of furniture that no fashionable salon can be without. And I'm viewing it from the back, you see. Is that a, what's that? A chaise long? A chaise long. A chaise long. 
I think you have one of those in your bedroom, don't you? Uh, yes. Because that's the kind of <laughs> style icon I am. Yeah. There we are. There's a chaise long. And next to it, can you see this? Next to it is this What's lovely that? piece of furniture. Oh. I don't know what that is. It's a chaise short. Oh. <laughs> God. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're a lovely audience. Such a dad joke, isn't it? <laughs> Short. How long have you been sitting on that one for? Um, actually, I've used that. I'm afraid I've used that. In, I, it is actually in uh, Ada Goth's bedroom. I think she's got a chaise long and a chaise short. Um, I was going to say you wouldn't. Special. You wouldn't have not used that in one of your books. No, I, mean, I, I collect these things, obviously. Um, no, I like. I like what you're doing with the um, with the curtains. I'm now going to reciprocate by uh, doing a nice fabric on your, your lovely awkward armchair. Nothing needs an awkward armchair. Awkward armchair could be a thing, a bit like lazy boy armchairs. You could have an awkward an armchair. An awkward armchair. They do sometimes talk about easy chairs, don't they? What are easy chairs? And they're sort of, you know, comfortable chairs as opposed to upright, you know, to dining room chairs. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, so why one could have awkward chairs, I think. Well, I'd live here. Well, what happens, I think, when you start to furnish a room? I mean, you, you as an illustrator, you start to think, OK, right, now, what angle is this? I was going to say, yeah, to it's getting the angles right on the room. Yeah, exactly. And But again, I think, in, in the spirit of just sort of the way we're drawing all this, is that if they don't quite match, that in itself is, uh, gives it a certain style. You know, you, you, you don't necessarily have to always be, like, naturalistic. Sometimes it's about sort of... It's about quirkiness, isn't it, really? It is, yeah. Yeah, it's exactly that. Charming. Uh, quirkiness and charm, I think, are, are, are those two things that can be, you know, quite difficult to convey sometimes. And sometimes they don't work, but sometimes they really do work. And they can be really, really um, effective when, you, when you're communicating. Um, you know, uh, attempting to sort of, you know, furnish an imaginary interior. So we've got, uh, we've got that, we've got, um, <coughs> I'm going to sort of suggest some What's going floorboards, on and there's a great big expanse of carpet coming. Oh, oh so this is the, that's the wall? No, no, that's, oh, that's the oh, corner of the carpet. Oh, see, I'm going to extend the skirting boards here. So let's go. And the rug, actually, that's the extent of, of the <laughs> carpet, as it were. And so my... There's a bit of floorboard there. And it's a question of what... I just don't think you'd have a chaise long in the middle of a room like that. It's a fun chaise Yeah, but we, we, you're forgetting the fourth wall. Maybe that's right against the fourth wall, you oh, see, which, which we've okay, taken away okay. for, for these purposes. I see. So, um, so let's have, I mean, the other, the other thing that's all, always quite fun, don't forget, you know, our lighting. Oh, yeah. So you can't beat a signature. That's a full ball. It's, it's a signature lampshade. And when I was furnishing Ottoline's apartment, apartment 243 in my Ottoline books, uh, above the very long dining room table. In fact, Ottoline, I've suddenly realised, sat at a table that was longer than Vladimir Putin's negotiating table. Didn't know it at the time. Anyway, above uh, her table, there were lots and lots of different lampshades. So I had to come up with, and they, they changed every time she came, went into the um, dining room to have uh, supper with Mr. Munro, there was a different set of lampshades above the table. I like to think that my readers enjoyed that little bit of detail, but it did mean I had to come up with lots and lots of different designs for, uh, for lampshades. All hanging from the ceiling. 
all hanging from the ceiling, yes. So this is a very sort of lampshade, heavy, have a sort of candelabra effect as well, can't you? Again, it just forces you to think about furnishing your room. I'm doing a lot of drawing here, Katie. You jump in. Well, what about yeah. having giving us something here? Mm. And I'm going to do a picture rail here, bordering our room. And what else is in the room? Just glimpsed here is a picture on the wall. Well, we need like a. A of, table or something. Of a close relative, yeah. It's one of the, this is one of those family portraits that you get in them. What angle is this table going to be at? I want to do like a table. Okay, okay. Well, you do an angle uh, and I'll come and support whatever angle you choose to go for. Mm, this room's weird. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what. Do um, this, do this. Oh. There you go now. Yep, yep, you see, you just, just <laughs> politely nudged me away. <laughs> just had a third. Okay, right, right. You can't stop me doing a little, little chair. Get out my spring. A little chair. At your t Oh, that's a very long leg. <laughs> Suddenly you're forcing me to do a very, very high chair. I'm doing a high chair at your very high, high table. Sorry. This is the know, high... It's hot. This, you know, chaise short, short has thrown just, me just, off. Just next to it. It's, it's next to it. Don't worry. It's, it's not clashing. There you go. There's one little... There you go. And here's another little, little guest. Sitting at the table. He's in an enormous chair. So there's the high chair, and then this is the enormous chair. I feel this should be in some sort of Ikea catalogue, and we should label all these little things. Sort of little, and, and then give them, you know, those humorous uh, names for furniture. This chair is the... the flawn. Or the litter. Or the Norsk, just here, slightly overshadowed by the lamp fittings, is what every room needs. Excellent. It's a set of architect's drawers. There you go. Mm, okay. A little. And then, Katie, on the, don't put your pen away. Sorry. Honestly, we're, me. honestly, there's just work to do. On top of that, there are sort of three objects. I want you to put three objects on top of my architect drawers. Mm, okay. Do a pretty bow. Just while I put some legs, some other supporting legs on your table, so it doesn't topple. This is a very ghostly meal he's having. It's rather tragically sort of... There we go. Lovely Chippendale table. So in my goth girl books, I had a furniture designer who um, worked... Um, uh, in a woodwork shop um, with his top off. Uh, he had bulging muscles and fashionable ladies would go and watch him work in his work furniture workshop and he was called Thomas Chippendale. Oh, nice. I'm thinking this is just going to be a statue there. Maybe. Oh, I see. That's a statue. That's rather lovely. And that's, I'm going to decorate your ceramics there. What's that? Um, a pile of books. A pile of books? Yeah. Perfect. And what's that? A pile of wrapped sandwiches, <laughs> which should be on the table, but for some tragic reason are on top of the 
And this is a lovely sculpture of Great Aunt Maud. Oh, I, I like that. Japanese uh, Great Aunt Maud for some reason. And now all we have to do now is provide my favourite pattern. Oh, I see. And this is a paisley pattern. So this carpet. It's a paisley pattern carpet. And I, I love the paisley pattern. It comes from uh, from India originally. And it was uh, it's called the paisley pattern because the uh, textile looms of Scotland uh, in, in the town of Paisley um, churned out uh, sort of rolls and rolls of this, this fabric. It became a real sort of favourite of the Victorian era. Um, but it is in fact India, Indian in its origin. And it's just basically these little tadpole configurations with little dots around them. And we enjoyed a bit of a revival, I think, in the 60s, the Paisley pattern was associated with sort of all things modern and slightly psychedelic for reasons that I'm not quite sure about. I'd like to investigate that. The resurgence of the Paisley pattern. And I remember my father had a cravat. Do you remember cravats, Katie? I have never worn the, one. Are they the things that go around your neck? Yes. Yes. And there was a bit of a fashion for cravats in the in the sixties. When you say, "Do I remember them?" Well, I'm, I'm, <laughs> do I do I know of them? Yes. Do you know of them? Not yes. do I remember them. I'm almost, you know, conferring on you my memories. But my father had a paisley pattern cravat. I remember that he sometimes wore with an open neck like shirt. Um, I, I think this is more a rug if it's a paisley pattern rather than a carpet. But anyway, there we are. Maybe you've gone over it. Then. Paisley pattern. Of course, yes, I've gone over it slightly. I'm going to reintroduce some floorboards there. Well, that, <laughs> okay, let me just, that, that is a little ghostly sitting room. Pretty spooky. Mm. Okay. So, an imaginary interior <laughs> with paisley pattern carpet and a slightly sozzled ghost, and a very hungry ghost. It's because he got too sozzled, he didn't cook dinner. And just outside, a garden of some sort, just glimpsed through the panes of glass. Lovely. Now all you need to do is write that story. Yeah.